Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at, of course, a Prince of Kokaitis ramp dragon list. Still very popular, still being the top of the meta roughly, at least looking at some of the current tier lists that have been updated and stuff like that. So no real surprise, it's still an extremely strong deck. Even with Vile Violet Dragoon getting a slight nerf in its, in its cost, sorry, definitely still very, very strong as a deck. And quite enjoyable to play. I've also enjoyed playing the Zoe's in this variant. It's done a very nice job, so we're going to get right into it and check it out. So the first matchup for this Dragon deck is against Rune. It's getting pretty predictable on what you can expect from most crafts now. So Rune, most likely going to be Mysteria. There are some Earth Rune, but I would say Mysteria is kind of 9 out of 10, where Earth Rune's 1 out of 10 as far as matches typically go. Then of course you have Mid Shadow. You've got Axe Green Forest. There's the occasional Highlander variants of those decks, which not a huge shock. I mean, Highlander is still quite a popular archetype. And then, of course, you have Dragon, which is typically Prince of Kokaitis. Portal has a few different variants, and really, there's not much else in the current meta. Blood, nearly always Dark Feast Bat. There really isn't much else. Hand buff kind of died off now. And that's really it. But, of course, this deck prides itself on being able to ramp hard and draw heaps, which is kind of the main idea of most Kakaitis decks now. So kicking us off pretty early with as much ramp as we could get. Taking us up to 5. And setting up a very reasonable board for this kind of turn. And really against Rune, typically ramping is the most important thing, as you don't want your opponent being anywhere near you when it comes to play points, because as soon as they get to turn 9 or turn 10, they're going to straight up end the game. As far as Dragon goes, they can drag out a bit longer. So if you have at least two turns to set up a good lethal, usually that's the best way to do things. And right now, we're kicking off very well. So Windblast is a little crippling, but not the end of the world. And there is the Prince, and we're only... We're going to be able to use that next turn. I definitely probably should have went for the Lyriel, though. Would have been a much better play if I had have played that now. But then I wouldn't have been able to ramp either, so maybe it wouldn't have been quite as good. But at least as far as things go, this is looking to be a very, very nice hand. We're going to be able to remove this very easily with the 1-3. Still get a couple damage to face, even drop pretty much whatever we want at this point. Since we ended up with our second Prince in our hand without having to go for the Lyria, we can save that, use it next turn, no real issue. Draw a Prince card from our deck, for basically free. And we even got Earth Fall, which is one of the nicer cards to get, as it will clear out any Mysteria board. The only real issue now is this Mysterian Missile. As they are getting rid of a lot of cards, and not really a surprise. And there's the Fari Embrace, so they're definitely running basically the same Mysterio deck I did in my last video. It's not a huge shock because it is quite popular now. And there is the Azeroth Reckoning, so we only need to stick one damage to the board. It looks like that shouldn't be too difficult. Especially since we gave the Omen of Disdain a decent target now. So Omen of Disdain is pretty much going to 100% be the thing they want to kill. And we're going to very easily kill them with this Lyria. Since it is defended, much harder to deal with. They'd have to waste at least two spells on it most of the time. So, definitely a nice way to go. Azeroth's Reckoning just ending the game outright. Now, for a little bit longer game, we're up against Sword. So, not getting Prince of Kokaitis will definitely drag your games out a lot longer. And if there's any deck you want to go up against for that, it's probably going to be Sword, honestly. Since this deck does a pretty decent job of handling its early game, it's usually not a big issue if you take it a little slower. And we're kicking things off a little slow, but still not impossible, and that Dragon Oracle was actually ideal. I couldn't have asked for a better draw off the top. I would have been a little awkward if I didn't draw that, but since we did, Definitely improving our odds. And our Dragon Life Blade should be a big help at getting these early Vile Violet Dragoons. Vile Violet Dragoon is just great. Can't go wrong with that card. 
even as a 6 cost, totally worth to play. It's just got such a good draw engine with the disdain package. So there's the Life Blade, plus the Arbiter, and a nice chance to play Dragon Ute. So we definitely got to take it a little slower, since I couldn't use um, the Dragon next this turn, because of course no Evo point. But next turn, might be possible if we get a little lucky. Although they are going to do a nice job at dealing with this. So that's a little disappointing. Because we need to deal with both these cards as effectively as we can. And Disdainful Rend is pretty much ideal. We're going to be able to clear both of these cards out. We're going to be able to draw four cards. And set ourselves up pretty nicely. As draw is definitely the most important thing this deck has. You want to take as much advantage out of those dragons as possible. Soldier's Vow, one you don't see played that often. I was actually a little surprised when I saw it drop. I actually had to double check its effect, but it basically is whenever a commander comes in, uh, summon a follow up that is cost less. Pretty much it. Pretty straightforward card, honestly. So, Dragon Cleaver Roy, I favoured the Dragon Strife Blades because we're going to be at turn 10 next turn anyway, so having removal was more important to me. Thanks to having one free card slot, it's not really a big issue. It just means we can't really use Vile Violet Violent Dragon next turn. And now things get a little more interesting. I've got to get creative. I've got to find a way to remove the entire board as effectively as I can without losing too much. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Since we have the White Frost, we've got a little bit of an advantage. We'll be able to wipe the board and just leave up the 5-2 while getting 3 damage to the face, which... Should definitely help us out in the long run. Lancer of Tempest coming down hard. But not hard enough. Very, very easy card to get rid of. Especially when we've still got an Omen of Disdain. Since we are going to wipe this very quickly. And we have another chance to go for a Dragon Ute, which is going to give us another decent removal card. Along with another chance for a draw, since I can't really take advantage of any of my draw power yet. So I may as well just aim to get a Kakaitis as quickly as I can. Holy Bear Knight getting summoned off that, not bad. And again the Crescent Blade is going for whatever they can get. The only real disadvantage is they couldn't easily clear the Disdain yet. Zealot of Usurptation, definitely a good way to do so though. So what makes this deck so interesting, I haven't seen a sword deck that runs this exact engine. So it definitely piqued my interest and caught me off guard, which is why I did play a little more conservative most of the time. Trying to take advantage of whatever I could kind of get. But we did pretty okay, I think. We would easily overdraw if they attacked, but not really a worry, since this Crimson Lancer is definitely going to be the thing they kill this 6-4 with. And now that we have a Kakaitis, we've actually got a chance, although we do need to worry about how much board they have, so maybe removing that is the optimal thing to do. But now that we've got double prints, we're definitely looking at a very solid hand for long term. It's just a matter of making sure that they can't really do anything big to us yet. And trying to get whatever draw I kind of can. And at least we're drawing out a lot of our fodder, which will kind of help us now because we can actually play them. And Dark Saber Melissa. Great. Especially when we've got Undying Blue. So this is definitely turning into a very rough game. Luckily the Raging Dragon draw is perfect. I just had to make a little space on the board so that I could use this play effectively. Now we're going to pretty much wipe the board nearly at this point. It's going to be pretty close to wiping. And then we just go face for a little bit of damage. So with only 11 health left and Zoe in hand, it's really just a matter of what they leave up. By the looks of it, it's not going to be easy to remove everything here. Leaving up that Poseidon is going to seal their fate. Zoe for 6 damage, straight to the face. Ending this very, very sweetly after such a long game against this sword player. Really dragging it out on me. So when I use this deck, I definitely want to aim for as many of those kind of early drops as you can get, especially Dragon Oracles, Servant of Disdain, things like that. I also don't mind the Violent, Violent Dragoon being kept at least once, so not always too bad, but 
double prints, perfect, can't go wrong with that. Zoe, another great card, especially since it's a really good turn one draw card. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. You'll find the deck list in the description below. Until next time, see ya.